For more on the situation in Syria, I'm joined by Russ Baker, an award-winning investigative reporter and founder of WhoWhatWhy.com. So how has the situation in Syria changed since the beginning of this uprising? Uh, well, first of all, I think we're seeing a similar pattern to what we saw in Libya, and that is this. Uh, the Western countries clearly want Bashar Assad out just as much as they wanted uh, Gaddafi out. And we are seeing this introduction of tremendous amounts of force, very skilled, sophisticated operations, like the assassination of that cleric, like the assassination of a general the other day uh, in Damascus. Very skilled operatives are bringing this battle right home uh, to Assad. And that is not the sign of a traditional peaceful uprising. Uh, that's not to say that there are not a large number of people in Syria who would like to get rid of Assad. But I think that that sentiment of part of the population is being dramatically helped along by outside forces. You don't think that's more than simply uh, army defectors with training with those kind of skills, putting those skills to use? Well, but that would assume that these people can do this all on their own. You know, I covered the overthrow of Ceausescu in Romania, uh, what was that, in the, uh, in the late uh, 80s. And, you know, in that case, there were snipers all over the place doing things. But again, they were coordinated. Uh, these kinds of things don't just happen on their own. Uh, they have to get a hold of uh, a lot of arms because we're really talking about a very extensive operation all over the country. And, and some of this has to be coordinated. Uh, the indications... All you have to do is look at the resolve of the United, Nation, the United States and all of their allies in basically saying that Assad uh, has to go. Uh, you know, they don't say that in other countries where similar types of, of violence and human rights violations take place. It's very much a question of alliances. Yeah, Bahrain, for example. So Western states have repeatedly blamed Assad, though, for committing atrocities and said he should go. There have been several reports of this in the news. Do you think this stands the by the West is justified. Do you think, uh, why do you think they are uh, so persistent in urging for regime change in Syria? Well, so two answers here. First of all, I think that those allegations of atrocities, I think there probably are some, but we don't know exactly who's committing them or why. Those have tremendous propaganda value. Uh, on our website, whowhatwhy.com, we covered the propaganda war against Gaddafi, all sorts of allegations that were spread by the media of the world that have turned out not to be true at all. Uh, it's, I'm very skeptical of why Assad would find it to be to his advantage to, to, to torture children on a widespread basis, even if he does have, which he has, a brutal regime. Now, the, the, your other point uh, goes to who benefits here, and I think this is about a Shia Sunni split, and I think it's about oil. Essentially, what you have is the Assads uh, are from a minority in the country, and that minority is Shiite. So it's sort of the flip situation of in some other countries, uh, and they uh, have a majority there that is Sunni. Now, what's Sunni nearby? Well, Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia uh, very much uh, aligned on the opposite side uh, to uh, Iran and Syria. And it's in, in Saudi Arabia itself, you have an uprising which nobody is covering uh, in the eastern province where most of their oil is, most of their wealth is, and that's in an area dominated by Shiites tied in with uh, Syria and uh, Iran. Now, a lot of the coverage of the situation is being based on uh, the word of uh, basically uh, people taking the word of the opposition members, giving their reports and their information from the ground. Do you think reports from the opposition, uh, from the rebels, can be trusted? Well, I, look, we don't know who they are. I mean, the, the mere fact, I was just reading a New York Times article today, I've got it right here in front of me, and they go on and on, and they say the group, the group says, they said this, they said this, they said this, uh, military massacres of detainees. These accounts could not be independently verified. So the question is, what's the journalistic standard there? Uh, I, I assume that they, whenever the government says something, they have a disclaimer saying uh, this is probably propaganda, but why would that not be propaganda too? And furthermore, what actually are these groups? Who created them? Where is the funding coming from? I mean, I think that's uh, journalists who don't take sides and do their jobs really have to ask these kinds of questions. Now, this, the resolution on Syria that's voted today in the General Assembly is based on a peace plan that was drafted by the Arab League. How do you assess the Arab League's role in tackling this crisis? 
Well, you see, this is the problem is what is the Arab League? We, we don't step back. We, we don't ask, what is the U.N.? How did Ban Ki-moon get uh, his power? Uh, oh, who are the largest dues-paying members? What are the kind of pressures that these people and these institutions face? The Arab League obviously is a different Arab League than it was a few months ago. There uh, clearly you know, is a new Tunisian uh, force there. There's a somewhat new Egyptian group in there. Uh, the Arab League, I assume, heavily financed by Saudi Arabia. Uh, and so, uh, you know, you have to ask whether we should be treating these entities as just sort of neutral arbiters or uh, as coalitions that are heavily influenced by particular members. Now, al-Qaeda has recently said that it backs the Syrians in the fight against the regime. Does it mean that the West is now fighting on the same set as al-Qaeda? Are they strange bedfellows here? Well, you know, that whole relationship is much murkier, murkier again, than the uh, mainstream media is willing to acknowledge. Um, we've been looking a lot at al-Qaeda. We've looked at the raid uh, that purportedly uh, killed him and the sort of strange circumstances in which, in which the U.S. Uh, disposed of his body and didn't want to provide any details. The United States government later said that they took their instructions on how to handle that from the Saudis. It's very, very extraordinary, the whole thing. Uh, in that area of the actual relationship between the Saudis uh, and al-Qaeda, uh, besides the ongoing relationship, obviously, with the bin Laden construction company and the bin Laden family, is, is, is not properly investigated. I think there's a lot more going on here, and I don't find it to be a coincidence uh, that, that al-Qaeda is on the same side as Saudi Arabia. All right. We have to leave it there. Russ Baker, award-winning investigative reporter and founder of whowhatwhy.com. Thanks for your time. Thank you.